This is the RC Jet Jog. Mm. Oh, I just broke it. What's going on guys? Jet Jock here, just sitting down in the shop. So today we have a big, big episode. This is going to be part one in the build series of the MB339. Now, I'm guessing you guys are probably looking at this airplane going, well, Jet Jock, that ain't the uh, MB339, and you would be correct. But this airplane plays a major role in the MB339. So we'll get to that in a second. Um, but just a, a proof of life here, we've still got the MB339 on the table. Now, the, um, the build footage that we're going to show y'all here in a little bit is gonna get y'all caught up to the landing gear installation. And stick around to the end of this episode because, not really live, but I will be doing it for the first time with you guys here I'll be extending the landing gear and we'll be testing that out. But stick around to the end of the episode for that. So uh, before we get into why this airplane is important, we just hit a thousand subscribers. Now I know that happened a few weeks ago and we've been super, super, super busy and I've been wanting to share this footage with you because it was so cute and I was so touched. The girls actually celebrated it. They did it by surprise. And oh my gosh, I was so touched. So let's roll that we footage made it real to quick. Thousand subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Hey, chicken girl, you gonna cut me some cake or what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Two. <laughs> While Donkey Girl enjoys gloating over getting the first piece of cake, we wanted to personally thank each one of you for making this dream possible. We love spending time together and we love sharing it with you guys every morning and we look forward to many more in the future. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, that was so darn cute. Um, they made my day. Um, and guys, they are in it just as much as I am. Uh, you know, they do a lot of the behind the scenes work. I mean, y'all know Beluga Girls on the camera. Chicken Girls helping me out with editing and doing some other graphics and other things like that. So they're really involved. So they are very proud of all of this. And um, I couldn't do it without them. And they keep me going every day through the highs and the lows of the whole YouTube world and process. So um, I, I love them to death and uh, <laughs> I, I'm so humbled by you guys too for uh, tuning in every week and talking with me. Oh, I love talking airplanes to all you guys. So keep up those comments. And for guys that are seeing this for the first time, hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you part of our family and sharing our mornings with you. So that being said, let's talk about this. This is a Falcon 120 um, and it's got a Jet Cat 60 on it. That's right. Hmm. Where have we heard a 60 size motor being required? Maybe it's because it's for the MB339. So yes, that's correct. So we found this airplane on Marketplace. It was a really, really good deal. Basically, we bought the engine, we get an airframe. Now guys, never fear. We're not cannibalizing, selling, or anything like that with this airframe. Once we harvest the motor out of it and all the components, it's getting hung on the ceiling. So just in case something happens to the MB339, which I really, really don't want it to because I really like this airplane, um, we will be able to at least still be able to fly turbines um, until we get the repairs done necessary, if that ever comes to, uh, if that ever happens. I don't want that to happen. So like we mentioned earlier, at the end of this episode, we will be testing out the landing gear for the really, for the very first time on the MB339. So, how about we send y'all back in time and we get you caught up to where we are right now with the MB339. And while that's rolling, I'm going to go ahead and get this table all switched around so we can set up for the landing gear test. Here we go. Part one of the MB339 build series covers steps one through 95. 
You begin by removing the flap hinges, then cutting the film that is covering the flap control horn mounting area. Then you iron those pieces flat so you have a nice flat spot to mount the control horn. Next, you take all of the flap hinges and tighten the little screw that holds the two pieces together. We found that some of them were quite loose, so this is a very important step. Now we're going to epoxy the flap hinges to the wing and test their operation one last time. Then we will clean up the excess epoxy and tape the flap to the wing so its final position stays put while the hinges are drying. Next we get out the aileron control horns and start sanding them for burrs and also roughening up the surface so they adhere better. Then clean them off with alcohol and cut off the holes in the aileron where they will mount. Now as per the instructions, we assembled the control horns and then we dry fitted them to the aileron. Next we assembled the control horn linkage by snapping the little metal ball into the plastic receiving end and then we dabbed a little machine oil around it so it wouldn't get sticky. Then we put that in between the two control horns and assemble the unit as one with the control horn mounting plate on the bottom. Hangar 9 made this kit really easy because each step had its own individual hardware bag. Love that touch, guys. Now we're epoxying the control horns to the ailerons. As you can see, there's tape laid out to keep the excess glue from squishing out onto the aileron. The next step was to tighten a little screw that held the hinges for the ailerons together. Sorry I didn't get that. Next, we epoxied the hinges into the aileron, wiped any excess glue that may have squished out when we put them into the hole, dabbed some more glue inside the wing side, and then on the tips of the aileron hinges, and then we popped that into place as well. Now it's servo installation time. The instructions have you start off by taking the servo covers off for the ailerons and drilling out the holes where the aileron servo will mount. Then they have you dab some thin CA in each of the holes for strength. Next we install the servo. Then we use the self-tapping screws to attach the servo cover to the wing. Then we unscrew those screws, filled the holes with thin CA, attached the push rod to the servo, and then remounted the whole thing. The flap servo insulation begins with building up the control linkage between the servo and the flaps. As you can see, it took me a few attempts to get to the 108 millimeter mark as prescribed in the directions. After the linkage is the correct length, it's time to remove the servo control horn and attach the control horn to the linkage. Then the flap servo is installed into the wing with output and forward. The servo arm with linkage is attached. The flap is folded all the way forward and little marks are made where the linkage is coming out of the inside of the wing. Then we use these marks for the center location when we install the flap control horn. Now it's time to string the servo wires through the wings. You use the supplied string, tie it off, pull it through the wing. And as luck will have it, because that string is so thin, one of them always has to break, and we always rescue it with thin bailing wire. Hey, we live on a farm. We have a lot of that stuff lying around. Then we secure the flap servo covers the same way that we did on the ailerons. Now we'll set aside the wings and we'll pull out the horizontal stab and elevators. The first thing you do is you separate the elevators from the horizontal stab and go through all of the hinges and tighten the little screws. Like I said before, very important and we found a few loose ones. Then you cut out the holes in the elevators and assemble the control horns. Then you'll epoxy in the hinges, attach, and then set aside. Next, you'll locate the vertical stabilizer. Then you'll separate the rudder from the vertical stabilizer, cut out the holes for the control horn, assemble the control horn, glue the control horn in, then take all of the hinges, tighten the little screws, and then epoxy the hinges to the rudder, then attach the rudder to the vertical stab. After the epoxy has dried, then you move on to servo installation in the vertical stab. Next, you remove the servo control arm and mount the servo to the mount the way you did on the ailerons. 
Next, you build up the linkage. Attach the linkage to the servo control arm. Then reattach the servo arm to the servo. Then attach the linkage to the rudder control horn. Now it's time to pull out the horizontal stabs for servo install. This was probably one of the more tedious tasks so far in this build. Just because the elevator servos are actually buried inside of the horizontal stab. The process begins by removing the film where the servo arm will be sticking out. On my model, I had to remove some pieces of wood that were blocking the way for me to install the servo into the horizontal stab. Note, this was not in the instructions. Next, you take the servo control arm off of the servo. Then you screw the servo in to the mount inside of the horizontal stab. Then you reattach the servo control arm build up the linkage, and then attach it to your servo and to your control horn. Now that step's complete, it's time to set aside the tail feathers and pull out the wings for main gear installation. They start off by having you solder the battery connection of your choice to the gear module. We didn't have one, so we skipped this step. Then we cut off the film that was covering the wheel wells and then ironed the excess so it didn't flop around or come off in flight. Then it was time to string the wires for the landing gear through the supplied holes and then bolt them to the wings. Well that was a much quicker step, so let's set those wings aside and let's start the nose gear installation next. The nose gear assembly begins with installing the nose wheel steering servo to the mount that is on the retract. Then build up the linkage and attach it to the servo between the ball joint and the servo control arm. Note, my nose wheel is turned backwards, so verify the position of the nose wheel before installing your servo and the linkage that goes on the ball joint. Now it's time to finally bust out that beautiful fuselage. When I dropped in the nose retract, that's when I realized that the nose wheel was actually backwards. Then we bolted in the nose retract. Upon trying to put back on the canopy, I realized real quick that the control horn that I used for the servo was too large. Oops, we replaced that and it fit again. Yay, my landing gear batteries came in. It's time to solder the correct connector for the module. And then let's give those gear a test. All right, guys, I hope that uh, beginning build process was helpful. And um, before we start doing this, I wanted to comment these instructions are amazing great job you guys over at hangar 9 um, a lot of instructions are well not written in english even if they say english but these are plain english the pictures are wonderful the step by steps i mean it's just amazing and if you're on the fence about buying this uh, because you're worried about all the assembly go on to Horizon Hobby or Tower Hobby or whoever, and they have the manual there. You can actually see what it's like. I mean, this is very reminiscent of like the old top flight models, um, stuff that I used to build back in the 90s. Um, so this is wonderful, incredible, great job, guys. All right, so now that y'all have seen all of our progress up until now, we're ready for a landing gear test. Now, the cool thing about this is the module that it comes with actually has a test button. So we're gonna be able to actually run the landing gear for you guys right now, so y'all can see just how, um, see if, uh, well, if it works. So without further ado, let's, now just granted, one of the gear may pop up on either side because the brake lines and the, um, and the uh, landing gear leads are all the same. So if you see two gear come up, I'm gonna just go ahead and switch them around real quick and then we'll do it. That's, the, that's what I get for trying to do this live. So um, here we go. So I'm gonna put the test button now, hold it just for a couple seconds, let it go, and let's see what happens. Yeah, so um, it appears that, hmm. Wah, wah. Um, hmm, that was interesting. Let's see here. Let's try it again. All right, two are working. 
that was not what I expected. I was expecting the, <laughs> well, that was interesting. Hmm. They're all in correctly. And the nose has a blue light. Makes me wonder if the nose is gonna work backwards now. Let's see what happens. All right, at least the nose stayed put. So we're gonna try it one more time and see what happens. Hmm. I don't know if there's like a fault in the nose or what. It's very odd. All right. Very interesting. All right, so let's try to troubleshoot this here. Let's see if we plug it into a different one. Let's reset the box. Okay. So it worked with the uh, left retract. Hmm. All right, let's put it back down. Okay, so I think this is indicating all in the up position. So let's go ahead and plug them all in now. And let's just see if this will do it. All right, so now we got them all plugged in. Now let's try it together. For some reason, it doesn't want to send to the nose. Huh. Well, guys, that's uh, <laughs> that's why we do this live. All right, guys. Um, I had to take it off camera for a second there uh, just to fiddle with this and figure it out. And I did remember reading in the main retract instructions that um, you can reverse polarity on the leads going into the module. So it was acting, in my opinion, like the nose gear was reversed from the mains. So went ahead and switched all that up. So let's see if my theory was correct and the nose wheel has to be reversed from the mains. So here we go. Here comes the test button now. Voila, there it was. So that was the problem um, all along. And that's why it's fun discovering these things live with you guys, because you never know what's gonna happen for sure. So let's uh, let's go give them a, a, let's go ahead and go landing gear up. Make it easy for storage for us. Let's get those wires to where they're not gonna get crimped. All right, guys. Well, that looks like a successful test. That'll do it for today's episode. I hope that you found this episode really, really enjoyable um, and really informative as well. And guys, I just can't stress enough what a beautiful model this is. I'm just, uh, I'm so thrilled and so happy. I can't wait to uh, fly it for you guys and fly it for hopefully many years to come. 
Please guys, don't forget to get your families involved. As you saw earlier, these girls, they may not be directly flying very much right now because, well, they have a lot of excuses, but they do love doing this with me, um, even if it's just filming or building or just even goofing around, spending time with me. They enjoy it, and I guarantee you, uh, your kids will enjoy it too. Bring new people into the hobby. When you see new people show up at the airfield, don't grump at them, bring them in. Give them a hands-on experience, what RC is all about. That's the only way we're gonna grow and survive. And please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. That's my favorite part of my day with you guys. And we'll see you next time. Bye.